I landed in Darwin, Australia first as the R&R &R jet I was on needed to refuel. What a hot place Darwin was as we got off the plane for a little while. It was January Australia's hottest summer month. The seasons are opposite in the Southern Hemisphere than in the mainland United States which is located in the Northern Hemisphere. One learns a lot while in the military, sometime during the stop or while flying low level in the jet I saw a big crocodile and jungle vegetation. Darwin felt and looked a lot like Vietnam. I liked the climate and people of Australia. I liked Australia and was determined to open up a pizza place here in two months, when I get discharged from the army. How exciting and fun that would be. I was looking toward the future now instead of giving myself up for dead. It felt good. I was to meet my gunner from the Australian Army Ernie Sparham on this R&R as he was getting out of the army at the time, but he got stuck doing something else and could not make it. But my girlfriend Sandy was in Sydney to wish me a good time and provided one. She wrote to me in Vietnam. How thoughtful. I don't think I had any other girls or girlfriends writing to me at all while I was in Vietnam. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. Besides, what are they going to say? I found a new boyfriend I am now married or engaged to, so-and-so. That was the truth of it for me. There was a gunner in the 116th or in the 128th that went home after his Vietnam tour and found a guy living with his wife in the gunner's house. He surprised the new lover and shot him dead. It was in one of the Carolinas. He wasn't even charged with murder but was back in the company again. Jeez. If I was put in that situation, I probably would have said, oh, well, that's how sometimes things go. But some of these guys get crazy, if you ask me. One cannot expect things to always proceed in the direction one hopes for. Half the time is more like it if you're lucky. Ha. Huh. My new residence near Sydney was a motel room above Bondi Beach. Sandy advised me on my choice. What a lovely place to forget about a war. Perfect. I guess one could call it the laid-back Riviera of Sydney. A beautiful seaside refuge with a big beach and little restaurants across the road. I had a steak with tomatoes on top of it with a beer. I was surprised at how much I liked it. Sandy liked smoking pot and cigarettes and drinking beer and kissing and doing what young people like to do together. We were in the same groove in more than one way. It could not have been better. I also went to see Ernie Sparham's stepmom and stepdad. They were extremely nice to me. They had a daughter a couple of years younger than I, but at the time I always figured I didn't want to get involved with any of my buddy's sisters. It was a rule with me then and probably still is. Brothers and sisters could be very protective of one another and it seems if one offends one of them the other is also offended. Anyway, Sandy was my Australian girlfriend at this time. Ernie's stepdad took me to a return serviceman league club which was a drinking place, a gambling place, a meeting place and a church all rolled up into one. Australians for the most part did not seem to be religious, spiritual but not religious. Gambling, conversation and drinking seemed to be a form of worship which was fine with me. The beer was strong, I think it was Victoria Bitter. One beer and I became dizzy. People wanted to buy me beers but I had to refuse. A lot of the guys were World War II fellows and said the American Yanks saved Australia from the Japanese and that they were very grateful for Americans and that they would fight alongside of us in any war. Lots of cheers and beers.